Perfect. All right, everybody, what's going on? And welcome to today's edition of Swag Talk, the show we cover the swag inside and out. Of course, I'm your tour guide around the swag. See Wells coming at you. And I'm just going to take today, man, to wrap up uh, the swag tournament, man, just give my little thoughts and opinions and all that little extra stuff um, about the tournament. We, you know, we're not going to do no no more deep dives or nothing like that, man. We're just going to um, just kind of go through what I thought the tournament, how the tournament shaped up as a whole. Um, you know, we did a a, 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 a session by session recap of all the games. So I'm just going to kind of share my final little thoughts on put a bow on this, man. I'm going uh, I'm to try to keep this short. Um, I know when I say that, I don't always do it, um, but I'm going to try, I'm going to try my best to keep this short. So um, I can get in and get out. Selection Sunday is the day, man. So y'all make sure y'all catch all the, uh, all the, all the shows, um, women and men are selected on Sunday this time. Usually, uh, they used to do the men, the men's selections on Sunday and women on Monday, but now, um, with the women having the first four, they're doing everything on Sunday. So we'll, um, we'll get, you know, make sure you check it out to see where Southern goes, see where Texas Southern goes, uh, keep tabs on the WNIT to see where Jackson State ends up at, keep, keep tabs on the NIT to see where Alcorn ends up at. And check and see, you know, if Grambling can make a postseason tournament somewhere. Um, I don't think they. I mean, I don't know if the NIT is going to take two swag teams, but Grambling does have a good resume and they have twenty plus wins, so that they may be able to still get in. But we'll see about that. Um, but I do think they're going to be playing somewhere uh, in the postseason. So with all that being said, uh, y'all can check the socials: uh, Facebook is Swag Talk, Instagram Swag Talk, Twitter Swag Talk seventy six. Of course, shout out to my boy Lois J with the trophy chasers. Uh, the Texas Southern Tigers, they trophy chasers, they trophy collectors. So, uh, you know, represent represent for my TSU folk. Uh, make sure y'all check it out. Uh, trophy chasers athletics. I'm gonna have a link in the description. Uh, y'all can hit him up, man. He got some really good stuff. Um, other than that, man, y'all hit the uh, hit the uh, subscription button to subscribe to the channel. And uh, if you have, if you subscribed already, man, thank you. If you haven't, hit that button. If you are subscribed, man, let somebody else know to subscribe, man. We we making our way up to eight, to up to nine hundred. Um, we're trying to get to that one k as a goal, but right now we're making our way to nine hundred. So we're gonna get there. We just gotta keep grinding and, and working. So um, hit that notification bell too to be alerted to any videos that I drop. Like the videos, please, please like the videos. Uh, if you want to share them, you can share them. And feel free to comment on your thoughts on the tournament as a whole. So um, we're going to go ahead and jump this thing off. Um, and we'll start off with the women's uh, with the women's tournament. Uh, this this tournament, man, uh, you know, like if you look at the final, um, the, the championship game, you had the seventh seed against the fourth seed. Uh, Pine Bluff was was a seventh seed, but they were 10 and 8 in conference. Um, every team that made it, all eight teams that made the tournament were at 500 uh, above on the women's side. Um, Alcorn just missed out on the tournament. They were one game under 500. So they had three really bad teams in conference. Um, they combined for six wins. Um, but everybody else was very competitive. So this, this was going to be a competitive tournament from the start. Uh, Pine Bluff could have easily been, uh, um, Three, four, five C. You know, if they would have won another game or two, um, they would have found themselves in that mix. So, you know, they they dropped the game. You know, they 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 lost to uh, Bama State. They lost to A and M. You know, games like that probably could have got them higher uh, in the standings. So, this was not your average seven C team. Um, same thing goes for Southern. Southern finished um, in a tie for second place. With uh, Alabama and M and with, with Alabama and M and Alabama State, they um, ultimately, due to tiebreakers, they finished fourth. 
Um, they won the individual tiebreakers over Alabama State and Alabama and them by point differential and Prairie View as well uh, by point differential. So this team could have been a two seed. They ended up fourth. Um, they got some magic and beat Jackson State, which you know was a surprise to a lot of people. Um, so this this was just how competitive this conference tournament was. I mean, Grambling lost to Jackson State by nine in the tournament. So that was, you know, that this was a very competitive tournament. I think, you know, anybody could have had opportunity. Um, all you needed to do was to, you know, find a way to win. And, you know, Pine Bluff was able to beat two really good teams to get where they were. Southern was able to beat, you know, two solid teams because Prairie View beat Jackson State in the regular season, so they were no slouch. And Southern, you know, Southern beat Prairie View pretty soundly in the first round. And that was actually the only double-digit margin of victory in the women's tournament was that Southern Prairie View game. Um, looking at um, at the numbers, uh, the uh, the winning teams averaged 64.7 points per game, a total of 453 points. The losing teams averages, averages, averaged 55.1 points per game, 386 points. That's a Average more than the victory, victory at nine point six points per game. So all these games were competitive. You know, it's like other than like I say, other than the purview, uh Southern game, every game was a nine point or less. So including a one point buzzer beater and a game that ended up in the championship, that ended up as a nine point game due to free throws at the end. So that you know that's that's something to really take into account um, that this was um, this was a, a very competitive tournament. Um, looking at some of the, the some of the scores, um, the top scores in in the tournament, um, the top women scores were both from Alabama State, uh, Jayla Crawford and Ayana uh, Emanuel. They both finished with uh, sixteen and a half points per game in the tournament. Um, Emanuel had the the high, the single game high in the tournament with twenty seven points. Um, Genovia Johnson from Southern, she had twenty points in in uh, in the semifinal game. And Shamaya Ward from Alabama State had 20 points in the first round game. So three players that scored 20 points. Um, Emmanuel had the top. Um, also, um, Daphne White from Jackson State, she she had 16 and a half points. So you can put up with the top scores. Uh, Johnson from Southern averaged 15.3. Uh, then you got uh, Beck and Covington. Uh, Beck from Pine Bluff and Covington from Jackson State. They both had 14 points per game. Ward, 14 and a half from Bama State. Uh, Maya Peter averaged 13 points per game for Pine Bluff. Uh, Monty McWayne, 12.3 for Southern. So pretty, you know, a lot of balanced scoring in, in these games. Like I said, they only had three, well, they had three 20-point uh, scores in these games. Uh, free throw shooting, I think, you know, like I said before, free throw shooting was Pine Bluff's Achilles Hill in, 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 this, in the championship game. But they actually – Shot the ball pretty well from the line in 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 most of the other games. Um, you know, it just when you mix when you ten for twenty six in a championship game, you know that's gonna hurt you a lot, including missing um, three 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 free throws off of um, off off of um, a, a, a foul on a, a a three point shot. You know, those are game changing moments. But this, like I said, this was one. This was probably one of the more exciting tournaments that I've seen in quite some time. I mean, you know, when you have your top team go down um, before the championship, that just opens up everything. You know, that just opens up everything for everybody who's who's left. You know, I, I think you know because you know because that was the last game of the session. It, you know, it took some of the drama out of you know who who was going to battle to face, you know, to face Southern, it, it, you want to put it that way, Pine Bluff had already won. So they they knew, um, they knew once that game was over, they knew who they were going to face. It might have been a little bit more interesting if if um, if, that, if the games were reversed and, and Southern won the first game and then uh, Pine Bluff and Bama State had to battle it out. And, and you know, they had to, they had to battle it out. And, and figure out which one of them was going to play Southern, you know, because then you would get, you may have got a different outcome. You may have got a different um, intensity because you know that the top dog ain't down the now, now your chances for a championship have increased hundredfold. But um, just going back to what I was saying um, about Pine Bluff, they shot 84% from the line 
against Alabama State. So that you know, this is not a team that that was just a horrendous free throw shooting team. They just had a bad day uh, at the wrong time, and that's that's what happens in tournament play. Uh, one bad day can can send you home, but um, I, I think you know, and you know, there's going to be some some talk about you know um, protecting your top seeds. You know, I mean, honestly, you know, I I, I wouldn't, you know, I'm not opposed to your top top seeds getting a bye to the semifinals or, or whatever. But you know, still, you still have to, you know, you still have to play and and win. So. The only way you're gonna truly protect your top seed is if you just send your top seed to the championship, to the to the to the uh to the tournament, you know, without a without a tournament. So you know, anytime there's an opportunity to play a game, the op- the the possibility of you losing is there. So you know, that's the risk that they took. Um, it it took a funky ending, you know, you know, to for them to lose, but you know that that's how things shape up sometimes. But I, I, you know, it, it kind of hurts when you look at the bracketology and you see Jackson State was predicted to be a 14 seed. You know, I mean that they that was just right there in their grasp, an opportunity for a winnable tournament game. Um, now you have Southern um, in the play-in game. Uh, I, I looked at a couple bracketologies. Um, Southern is predicted to either play Chattanooga. Uh, in the playing game, that's per ESPN and per College Sports Madness, they are faced. They uh, slated to face Southeastern Louisiana, so we'll find out who they play. Um, who they play in the in that game? I will say, if they win, they're gonna play South Carolina. So, it's, you know, grand opening, grand closing. You know, it's like you you get you get you get to win a game and get that tournament money, and then you get fed to the wolves. So. You know, you appreciate what happens. You know, Jackson State going to get a WNIT bid. We'll see what kind of matchup they get. They may be able to make a run in this tournament, man. You know, I mean, they you know, they can play, you know, they can play the style of ball and the type of ball that they're capable of playing. They can make a good run in the WNIT. It's not the same as, you know, playing in the, the big tournament, but, you know, anytime you can have success in non-conference play, um, non-conference postseason play it is it, just it bodes even well for you um this is a this is something I, I wanted to look at real quick I don't want to spend a lot of time harping on it because everybody's already you know talked about the attendance and everything but I decided to go through and look at the numbers um and, and figure out you know and just see where they stood um they won the total attendance for the two games with four, was 14 thousand thirty fourteen hundred. 31 people, 14,000. The place don't hold by 8,000. But uh, 1,431 people, uh, they they won. That's an average of 7, 15 and a half per game. Now, these numbers seem a little fishy. Um, not, you know, I don't know. You know, I don't know how they counted these numbers, but uh, day one average was 7, 15 and a half. Uh, day two, same numbers, 14, 31. Just, they were just split differently between the two games. So again, that's an average of 17, 715 people uh, per game. Uh, total, 2,826. Again, 715 and a half. So I guess I don't, I don't know how reliable that is, but you know that's what they, that's what I saw on the box scores. Uh, semifinals total 1,998. Um, average 19, average 999 per game. Uh, championship game. Uh, the attendance was 12,000, 12, I keep saying 1,000, 1,257, leading to a, a, a tournament total of 6,081 people, an uh, average of 868 per game. You know, I mean, you can you can look at that however you want to look at that. Um, I do I do know that the attendance did ramp up a little bit um, each, each round, and I thought the attendance was, you know, the crowds were active in the championship game and having, you know, um, a team like Palm Bluff make it and then a team like Southern suddenly make it, you did get a, a little uptick of people who decided to take the trip to Birmingham on Saturday, you know, because a lot of people, you know, especially Southern people, a lot of people before Friday night didn't even think about being in Birmingham on Saturday. So just making that last, you know, that last minute trip to Birmingham, you know, kind of gave it an uptick. Uh, Palm Bluff, they had a little bit longer to, to, to to figure that out, um, but you know they both they they made that decision probably on Friday too. Although some people from Pine Bluff may have went out there on Friday because they had an improbable 
victory on on Wednesday. So you know, you just never know. But that's that's how that shapes up. And like I said, um, we'll keep our eyes on selection show today uh, for the women, and then WIT selection. And we'll be we'll we'll come back tomorrow, and we'll you know we'll break down those those matchups and and talk about you know who who's playing who. Uh, let's switch over to the men's side. This this tournament was topsy turvy again, but at the same time, I you know Texas Southern was an eight seed, and you know we've said it a lot. This was not your normal eight seed. Uh, this this team, yes, record wise, they were an eight seed. Um, they, 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 they closed out their regular season on a three game losing streak. Uh, they started off really slow. Uh, they did put together a little streak in the middle of the season, but they, you know, this was a team who was preseason number one. So they were looked at as being able to defend their crown. So it's not like they were a team who just magically made a run like, like let's say I'm just you know I'm not picking on anybody, but let's just say uh, Pine Bluff, Alabama State, had made it as an eight seed and they went on a run. That's you know that's kind of a a, a, a miracle type of run. Or even Bethune Cookman because they were you know they were basically tied with Texas Southern. Um, well, no, they finished one game ahead of them, but you know they were a team who was barely in it. Um, you know those those are miracle runs to me. This Texas Southern team was not that. Uh, they opened up their season on a five-game losing streak. Uh, they were able to snap that streak and win three in a row. Uh, then they lost two in a row. Then they won one, lost one, won three in a row. And then they closed out their season with uh, with their three-game losing streak. So they, you know, they were able to kind of get themselves in position. And then they closed out, you know, in a tough in a tough way. But once they got in, and they, you know, they were able to play ball in the tournament. They did what they do, you know. I mean, they 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 went toe to toe with Alcorn, knocked them off. Uh, they they really ran past Alabama and them and controlled that game basically for the bulk of the game. Uh, Gramlin, they led from start to finish. Uh, you know, double digit lead at the half, but Gramlin fought back and and tied it up, but they couldn't get over the hump. And this, you know, this is a team that's gonna be, you know, a, a team to look out for when they, you know, and we we'll, we're we'll talking about bracketology in a second. But this is going to be a team to look out for. Um, when you look at um, the standings on the men's side, it's a little bit more cut and dry. Um, I would say, you know, I would say the majority of the teams who made it uh, is in the top part of the t- tournament kind of finished where they probably should have. Um, honestly, maybe you maybe you put Alabama in them if they were to win a couple of extra games ahead of Jackson State and Southern. Uh, that that probably was your third team. Um, JSU was twelve and six, but they, you know, they I don't know they they, they closed out their regular season on a five game winning streak, but they um, but they just you know I don't think they were really that impressive. Um, they they just were a team that was scrappy and they won, and you know that's you know that that can take you a long way. So not really knocking that, but um, you're looking at a team like Southern who started off eight and one and finished. You know, they finished uh, three and eight and, and barely, you know, and, and, and I mean, three and six and, and barely, you know, barely finished in the top half. And then they get, you know, beat soundly in the first round. Um, that's, you know, that's that's one of those things. Uh, Prairie View could have been, you know, up or down. You know, they they were erratic team. But then Cookman, they, you know, they, they were just <laughs> happy to be there, I guess you could say. Uh, this, this, the men's tournament, um, they had three double-digit uh, games, uh, three double-digit uh, final margin of victories. Um, so uh, two in the first round and uh, one in the second round. So, um, you know, pretty, pretty, a little bit more point scoring. Um, the winners in the men's, in the men's side averaged 72.1 points per game, uh, scoring a total of 505. The losers, 445 uh, total. Average of 63 and a half points per game. Average margin of victory, 8.6. So even with the three blowouts, the average margin of victory was a little bit closer than the women's side. Um, looking at some of the um, some of the scores in, in the league in this tournament, um, you had uh, Kevin Davis from Bethune-Cookman with 21 points in his only game. 
Uh, Will Douglas from Prairie View had 21 points in his only game. Um, Byron Joshua from Byron Joshua from All Corner at 21 in his first game. Uh, Messiah Thompson from Alabama and them had the high uh, point total, single game total in the tournament with 27. Uh, PJ Henry had 26. Um, you had uh, Ken Evans from Jackson State with 22 in, in, in the first round game. Uh, Barnes from Texas Southern had 20 points. Jordan Smith from Purdue had, from Grambling had 23 points in his first round game. Uh, looking at so if you take out the guys who only played one game because, you know, if you want to do averages, you know, you probably should have to play in more than one game. So if you take out the, the guys who scored uh, 20 points plus in their, in their only game, um, your leading scorer on the tournament would be uh, P.J. Henry at 18.6 points per game. Um, he was a solid scorer, 11 points his first game, 26 second game, 19 in the championship. Uh, Jordan Smith is a is a is a weird a weird situation. He scored twenty three in game one, eighteen in game two, and did not score in game three, giving him thirteen point six points per game. Uh, he scores anything close to what he scored the first two games that he probably leads the tournament in scoring. Uh, Cameron Christian, who was the conference player of the game, uh, the seat conference player of the year, he averaged fourteen point three points per game. Now he did have a a, a, a rough championship game due to foul trouble. Um, Jonathan Aku had 15 in the first game, zero in the second game, 11 in the third game. So his numbers were down. Uh, uh, Moten had, had 12, 7, and 10. His three games, uh, Coward, uh, 9, 18, and 8. Uh, Walker, 13, 4, and 14, giving him an average of 10.3. Uh, like I said, Thompson was another guy who had a great game in one game, then a bad game in the next 27, first game, nine in the second game, giving him a total of 18. Um, another guy who, and this is no surprise to me, but Colty Young from Jackson State, he had zero points in his first game, 18 in the second. Like I say all the time, this is a guy that shoots a lot. So if he's cold, then his numbers are going to be really down. If he's hot, uh, his numbers are going to be up. And that was a tale of two games. He was hot in one game, cold in the other. And ultimately, you know, he finished with a nine point average. Um, pretty, you know, so that's looking at, you know, some of the scores. Uh, looking at the attendance numbers on the men's side, your first, your first round number is day one, 1,285 people, uh, average of 642 and a half per game. Uh, day two, 1751, uh, average of 875 and a half per game. Total uh, is uh, 3,000. And 36 people average of 1,518 people per game. Second round, uh, 2437 total average, 1218 and a half. Uh, final, 1478 people, uh, giving you a league, giving you a conference tournament total of 6,951 people. That's an average of 993 a game. So when you look at the total tournament, neither tournament averaged 1,000 people per game. And again, you can make of that what you want to make of that. You know, everybody's already then went over this so many times. I'm not gonna beat it. On, I'm not gonna beat that horse no more right now. I'm um, gonna let it, let it, let it die and 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 decompose for a little while before I beat it again. But I'm gonna leave that alone right now. Uh, looking at the bracketology um, that I was able to find that's recent. You know, I mean, there's still some things that weren't updated before last night's game. Uh, Texas Southern obviously is going to be in a play-in. I mean, they had a losing overall record and a losing conference record. Even though this is a really good team, their record was not good, so they are play-in bound. Um, they are predicted to play uh, fairly. Dickinson University, that's um, a school out of New Jersey, in case you don't know. Um, they are projected to play them in the play-in game by ESPN and, uh, and uh, Jerry Palm, uh, who is one of the top bracketologists. And um, who was the other one that I got? Uh, busting brackets. That was the only, That was another. Um, that was another updated. Um, updated bracketology that I found. They they had Texas Southern playing uh, Texas A and M Corpus Christi, and you know, I, you know that's that's an interesting matchup. Um, so that that's pretty much you know where. 
where we stand right now. And that, you know, that would be a rematch from last season's tournament. I don't know if they're going to want to have a, 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 a back-to-back matchup uh, in the first four between two teams. So maybe they, they won't look that way. But those two teams played last year. Texas Southern won their game by nine. So we'll see what happens in, in that aspect. But they are first four bound, unfortunately. I mean, record just puts you in that, in that spot. Uh, Alcorn will get an NIT bid. So um, due to winning the tiebreaker and finishing first, they'll they'll get an NIT bid. Now, where Grambling ends up, that's interesting, man. You know, like I said, um, C, uh, the CIT tournament maybe. Uh, you know, maybe um, some people think that Grambling might be able to get the NIT berth. I'm not quite sure that the um, that the the NIT is going to take two SWAC teams, but you you never know. I mean, it, it it's probably all going to depend on how the bubble shakes out. Um, if some of those top bubble teams don't make the tournament, then they gonna they gonna um they gonna they're going to take those teams in the NIT and that's going to slide everybody, everybody down. Um, right now, the CBI is a, is a, is a opportunity, is a possibility. Um, right now that's a six, that's a 16 team tournament. They play in Daytona. Uh, that's a, that's a possibility uh, for Grantland to be taken now. Um, I would probably put my money on that more than the NIT, uh, just because, like I said, I think how the bubble shakes out is going to determine where Gremlin ends up at. But I do I, I do see Gremlin playing somewhere um, in the postseason. Um, so, that, you know, I think that's, that's probably where we're going to stand. So um, we'll, 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 know, we'll know everything tonight, and, and, and we'll, you know, we'll, we'll – Break down those games tomorrow. So that's going to do it for today's show, man. Like I said, I just wanted to come in and share my thoughts on the tournament as a whole. Um, have been doing a lot of recaps and not really sharing a lot of individual thoughts, but just wanted to put all that out there. And like I said, um, check out my socials. I'll, I'll have all the, uh, all the matchups for the tournaments on my socials. And then we'll do a show tomorrow breaking down those games. So with that being said, man, I'm Well signing out. Um, y'all have a good Sunday. And we'll catch y'all on the rebound. Peace.